Come on, Apple, bring them back. Bring them back with an M2, an M2 Pro. I'd even take a 27 inch iMac with an M2 Pro. That thing would still rip. Hey, and welcome to the DigiPro News Podcast, a topical podcast brought to you by DigiPro Tips that aims to round up the latest and greatest in the world of, you know, digital video production. That's anything from, you know, hardware, software, all sorts of new tech that keep you at the top of the game. You don't have to go out and find the information. I'm bringing it to you free of charge. It's a win-win situation. Now, I know it's been a moment, but as happens to the best of us, life gets in the way. As if you, you know, if you're a follower of DigiPro Tips, which I hope you are because you're, you know, you're listening and watching to this, then you'll know that this isn't actually my full-time job. Um, I have another job. And sometimes when it's busy, that has to take priority for obvious reasons. But anyway, I'm back for this episode and I've got some interesting updates specifically from the Apple WWC conference where some big updates to the Apple Mac lineup were announced. So let's get straight to it, I guess. It was the Apple Mac Studio and the Apple Mac Pro. Yeah, the, the cheese grater one. Yeah, that one. So it was only a matter of time, wasn't it, before those, like the Apple Mac Pro um, and definitely the Studio, even though it had them on, but for them to be updated from the M1 Max and Ultra chips up to the M2 family of Apple Silicon. Um, the Mac Pro getting like the biggest upgrade of all. So both were dropped at Apple WWC and they introduced, you know, the this M2 chip, uh, the M2 Max chip, um, which the Apple, which the Mac Studio can take, but it also introduced the M2 Ultra, which the Mac Studio can be upgraded to as well. But the Mac Pro comes with it as standard. You can't go in lower than the M2 Ultra. Now, the M2 Ultra is kind of the same as the M1 was. It's two of the Mac chips stuck together to make this fantastic, like amazingly powerful chip. Um, and so that's what the Mac Pro now has, an M2 Ultra chip. They state that these two additions complete the transition over to Apple Silicon. But hang on a minute, Apple. I feel like, come on, you you must be aware. You must be aware that everybody is waiting for the 27-inch iMac to make a return. Surely you know that. Like the beloved by creatives everywhere, the beloved 27-inch iMac and the iMac Pro. Come on, Apple, bring them back. Bring them back with an M2, an M2 Pro. I'd even take a 27 inch iMac with an M2 Pro. That thing would still rip. Anyway, the Mac Studio, as I said, comes with the M2 Max, but can be upgraded to the M2 Ultra. It's, you know, it delivers massive performance in that tiny little footprint. Um, a beautiful piece of, you know, computing architecture, in my opinion. They claim it's six times faster than the most powerful Intel-based 27-inch iMac. Oh, oh, that one we were just talking about. Yeah, okay. Three times faster than the previous generation Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra. So the, so the Mac Studio, the M2 Mac Studios, can be upgraded to have 192 gigabytes of unified memory. That is a colossal amount of memory. And depending on what you might be working in, what field of work you might be in, you might need that much memory. Who knows? But I'm going to say most people do not, but it's good to know that it can go up to that. I guess if you're going to go with the M2 Ultra, you are going to need more memory. Um, and so having that higher capacity threshold is definitely something that will be of an advantage to you. Um, I guess if you're looking at that kind of size, though, Maybe you might be looking towards the the Mac Pro, although obviously there is a bit of a price difference there. Price, price, price difference. Um, anyway, Mac Studio is um, availability is beginning on June the 13th, and I'm recording this on June 12th, so it is out tomorrow, depending on when you are listening or watching this. Um, it's, targeted it's targeted at professionals who need a compact yet high-performing device. So the Mac Pro then, let's take a look at the uh, the, the cheese grater um, of a system that is the Mac Pro that 
was incredibly powerful um, up until this point um, because it's even more powerful now. Um, it comes with M2 Ultra, so you can't get it, as I said, at uh, M2 Max because they are going for like super high end with this. And what they're doing with this top tier chip performance is they're adding it to an ex the ability to expand. Um, they've got PCIe expansion versatility built in. I think there's seven slots that it has in the back of it that you can, you know, any sort of PCIe integration that you might want for uh, SDI cards, um, different, you know, networking cards, whatever you might need for your setup, you have the ability to expand the Mac Pro with those. And so by adding in more um, PCIe slots, you probably need a faster chip to run that and you probably need more memory, hence the M2 Ultra. They say it's designed to handle most demanding workflows, boosting performance up to three times faster than the previous Intel-based models. Uh, like Mac Studio, the Mac Pro supports up to 192 gigabytes of unified memory. So yeah, like I was saying before, if you're going to go with the Mac Studio 192 gigabytes of memory, that caps out at the um, Mac Pro anyway, and it comes with the M2 Ultra. Like, I feel like you're probably going to be in the realm of the Mac Pro. Anyway. Um, both new Mac models have enhanced connectivity features and the Mac Studio supports um, up to six Pro Display XDRs um, and has built-in Wi-Fi 6E, which can deliver speeds twice as fast as the previous generation. Additionally, the device includes numerous ports for diverse needs, including Thunderbolt 4, HDMI and USB-C ports. The new Mac Pro excels with the inclusion of those PCIe slots that I was just saying. Um, catering to professionals who need internal expansion for their workflows. So it has six open slots support in Gen 4, it says. So the others, I'm guessing, are not Gen 4. Um, but it also, the Mac Pro has eight built-in Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 4 ports, um, Wi-Fi 6E as well, Bluetooth 5.3, uh, three USB-A ports, HDMI ports that support up to 8K resolution, and two 10 gigabit ethernet ports. So tons of connectivity with the Mac Pro. Um, the two gigabit ethernet, two 10 gigabit ethernet ports is interesting there. I, I don't know why you need two going into the computer, but unless it can accept the bandwidth, 20 gigabits of bandwidth coming in. Can you bond those? That'd be interesting. I wanna see that because working with NAS storage with the Mac Pro, bonded 20 gigabits that could be very powerful um especially when you've you know got this much throughput on the uh, on the on the memory there um both come with os ventura um but as they announced at wwc os sonoma is coming in the autumn so it will probably ship with sonoma if you were to buy it in the autumn um though you'll need to upgrade it from ventura right now so what are the price tags is what I hear you screaming down your monitor, your ear pods. I don't know, whatever you're screaming. Um, the Mac Studio starts at $1,999, $1,799 if you're in education, if you can get hold of that. Um, if that's available to you, then that's a saving. Um, but the Mac Pro comes in actually two different formats now, both cheese grater. Um, it comes in the tower format like it used to, but they also have a rack mounted version. And so the Mac Pro Tower enclosure starts at 6999, uh, 6599 for education, but the rack enclosure starts at 7499 and then 699 for education. Um, so yeah, okay, there is a massive price difference um, between the two of them. So, you know, when I said, earlier that you might be looking at the Mac Pro if you were going up with that much memory for the Mac Studio. You've got to kind of like take into consideration what the price difference is once you add in the memory on the Mac Studio, but you're not probably going to get anywhere near the 6999 um, for the Mac Pro. So Mac Studio could be a winner with that amount of memory, uh, that amount of power. But, you know, if you don't need those PCIe slots and all of those kind of like Thunderbolt 4 um, and you you know, you're happy with the connectivity that the, the Mac Studio has, then that's a winner of a price right there. Um, I'm sure reviews of both of these units are going to be 
all over YouTube soon, so I will keep you updated once I start to see those. All right, who remembers me talking about that video standard that runs across network cabling and allows you to transfer, you know, audio and visual data and all sorts of tally information and, you know, and it's like NDI, but it wasn't called NDI. It was called 2110 IP. And, you know, Blackmagic were adopting it in some of their new uh, products that they announced at NAB. Yet, yeah, you remember. Well, it's becoming standard now, broadcast standard uh, kind of protocol um, for sending and receiving video and audio data. And Panasonic are going to adopt it via a paid upgrade to their AKHC 3900 HD studio camera. That's right. 2110 IP is coming to studio cameras. So this paid upgrade from Panasonic is called the AKSFC 391. And it's for all um, uh, for, for the AKHC 3900 studio camera. And it'll be coming available in the third quarter of 2023, they say. Uh, this will enable the camera to be connected to ST2110 compliant broadcast equipment via fiber optic uh, or network switch. So, you know, being able to use your current network link, being able to use your current network uh, or, you know, upgrade your network uh, for 10 gigabit uh, connectivity. Um, you can now use that in your gallery as well allowing uncompressed video transmission and return video and audio communication from the studio without using a CCU. That's the important part. It, it removes that part of the workflow because everything can just be done through your network cabling now. You don't need that CCC unit. The upgrade will also allow the camera to connect to Panasonic's uh, Keros IT slash IP based live video platform. Um, so it can go straight into that without having to go through anything else. This, adva this advancement comes in response to the growing demand for video production and live streaming and the need for high quality, efficient video production. Like it's been around for a while, like new tech, you know, sorry, new tech, Vizarty, um, who now own it. NDI was way ahead of its time. And I loved getting on board with NDI. It's like something that um, transformed the workflow for me uh, when we were setting up studios. Now it's been adopted at a higher level, at a broad broadcast quality level, and it's been called something else. It's, you know, 2110 IP video. It's fantastic that that's, ha that's happening. And yes, of course, there is a real push towards it because it simplifies workflows. And that's why NDI was so great at the time. Um, so great to see how it will be, you know, transformed in the future. Um, key features of the upgrade include ST2110 compatibility for the camera, eliminating the need for the CCU, as we as we mentioned, um, enabling uncompressed HD IP transmission directly from the camera with low latency. That's the thing about this as well. Um, NDI was great at it, but up until NDI, transmitting video and audio data over a network or IP based, uh, you know, solutions always introduce latency. This is you, you milli like fractions of milliseconds, you cannot tell the difference. Um, and that's, that's the difference here. You can use it as if it was a HDMI or SDI connection. That's how good it is now. Linking with the care of platform allows for space saving, efficient and flexible IP live production. Um, significantly, the upgrade contributes to Panasonic's sustainability efforts by reducing power consumption during multi-camera operation due to the removal of the need for the CCU. As you know here at DigiPro Tips, we're all about different workflows in video production that can help towards sustain sustainability efforts. This is just another one of them, uh, which is great to see that Panasonic are pushing that forwards. Um, let's try and do more, shall we, across the board. So. 2110 IP video now making its way into studios at a broadcast, I cannot say that word, at a broadcast quality level. It's only going to get further from there. So staying with the theme of kind of computing um, and, you know, this time in the window space rather than Mac, we, and more specifically, talking about gaming cards. Yes, I know this podcast isn't about gaming, but obviously gaming cards have massive imp implications on what we do as video creatives. Um, and so we're going to talk about NVIDIA RTX. 
because what they are doing with the RTX cards and more, you know, specifically AI capabilities is incredible. Um, you remember, actually, I spoke about one of the things that they were doing, that eye tracking software that they could do in real time. That's using the RTX cards to be able to auto-correct, uh, if you want to, for want of a better word, your eye line in real time. If you, I'll put a link to it, but if you didn't see it, basically, if I'm looking off camera and really you wanted me looking down the barrel of the lens, then NVIDIA have this software. It works in real time. You can use, use it on calls and things, um, but you can also use it in live streaming. If you're not looking at the lens, but you want to, it will correct your eye line. It will like automatically visual affect your eye line to be looking down the lens, which is still bonkers that it can do that. I don't even really know how it does that. Um, so yeah, RTX is not looking to stop anytime soon and they're taking it even further because they are launching some new 14 inch studio laptops featuring GeForce RTX 40, um, yeah, the GTX RTX 40 series laptop, GPUs, and AI dedicated Tensor, Tensor? Tensor cores within them. Um, so the they say the laptops include innovations like simultaneous uh, scenes encoding that optimize video encoding for faster export times, which will be initially integrated into the CapCut video editing app. Uh, new uh, generative AI video New generative AI called NVIDIA Avatar Cloud Engine, or ACE for short, for games, was also announced, um, aimed at improving the intelligence and interaction of non-playable characters in games. They go on to say NVIDIA's studio laptops with the Ada Lovelace uh, architecture are presented as the fastest laptops for creative and gaming activities, making the most of their 14-inch size. They support over 110 creative apps and offer improved battery life and 3D rendering performance, among other features. Um, and then they list a, a bunch of the models that are going to be coming out featuring this. So I think for us, in terms of like video creatives, um, the simultaneous scene encoding that optimizes, optimizes video encoding for faster export times, um, that's going to be huge if we can utilize that outside of CapCut because, well, we don't... I don't know how many of you use CapCut, but I'm going to say most of us are going to want to utilize it in something else other than CapCut. Um, if we can get it, you know, in um, Resolve, if we can get it in Premiere, if we can get it um, in After Effects, any one of those will take it. They also said they introduced the Video Codec SDK 12.1, which supports multi encoder and the simultaneous scene encoding, thus speeding up encoding and improving image quality. So um, multi-encoder, yeah. Yeah, if we can get that, but not inside of CapCut, which surely they're going to unlock it at some point. If it's in the SDK, somebody's going to be working with it, then that could significantly reduce export and render times uh, for video creators everywhere um, using Windows PCs with an RTX card. Um, the May Studio Driver updates provide AI model optimizations for popular apps and improved AI features for applications running on uh, WinML, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Magic's Vega Pro, um, On One, and DxO. Interesting. Okay. So image uh, optimization on RTX2. So we'll need to run some tests on this, uh, but the power of RTX with multi encoder uh, simultaneous scene um, could be an absolute game changer for Windows, um, but we just need to see how you know which programs it's going to be available in. So whether you're a Mac user or a Windows user, you've got powerful chips coming at you from all directions, software updates that are geared towards, um, hardware updates that are geared towards AI and improved video efficiency, bringing down render times, giving you more time to be creative, which is what we're all about here at Digipro Tips. You know, it's our ethos, work smarter, not harder it gives you more time to be creative. So that's us caught up for another episode. And, you know, I've been a, I've been away for a couple of weeks, but if you have seen, heard anything that has changed your workflow or is going to change your workflow and you want others to know about it, then, you know, drop a comment on the video, give us a review, maybe mention it in there on Apple uh, Podcasts or Spotify. And in the meantime, remember, Work smarter, not harder. And I'll see you in the next one.